Hello, I'm Joshua Carr, and I'm back with part two of how to build a financial model. Uh, last time we were together, I built a very simple unleveraged cash flow for real estate. Uh, today, I'd like to add some leverage and, uh, you know, just basically add some complexity on the debt. By the way, I like to refer to it as leverage. A lot of times you hear people talk about levered returns. Um, it's the same thing. Um, I've always just called it leveraged because if you're adding leverage, then it becomes leveraged. Whereas if you say levered returns, I guess you're adding levers. Not really clear. Anyway, uh, nonetheless, again, I'm Josh, and today we're going to add some debt to the thing, or as I said, leverage. So first off, if I go over to assumptions, uh, we had a purchase price. Let me just move that over a bit. Space it out a smidgen. And I'm going to have some sort of loan to value. And I'm going to put it in as, say, 70%. And I'll say it's 70% times a million. Of course, the level of debt can vary. Things that are risky, like hotels, have low debt loads. Things that are not risky, like apartments, have high debt loads. <clears throat> in this case, we'll have a loan. Well, I guess I did that. We'll have equity. And the equity in this case will be a million minus the 700,000. In other words, 300,000. Excellent. If I'm going to have debt and I'm going to layer it into the cash flow statement, I need to build some sort of amortization schedule. So I will insert a worksheet and I'm going to call it my amortization schedule. And I'll bring it over here. And I'll make the loan be equal to 700,000. Uh, I haven't put in anything in terms of interest rates or amortization period. Uh, I'm going to need to do that. Um, I try to keep all my assumptions on the assumptions page because it's just good practice to have your drivers in one place. <clears throat> so I'll put them over here. And I'll make the interest rate, say, 6%. And the amortization period might be, say, 25 years. And I'll make that years and per year. Awesome. Again, I'll make that interest rate and amortization period. Okay, so now I need to build some sort of schedule. The schedule will have months. I'll have a beginning of period balance. We'll have a payment. The payment will have interest and principal. And then we'll have an end of period balance. And you know, I don't need to double up, but sometimes I do. I like to have the beginning balance, the end balance, just the flows. I think it's easier for people to follow. But again, that's a personal preference. <clears throat> and in this case, we'll have it start one, two, three, and I'm going to drag that little bad boy down. I'll drag it down to say, I don't know, 360 months should get the job done. Awesome. Okay, now the starting balance is, of course, $700,000, which means the ending balance will be that, too. I'm going to make the payment. In this case, the initial payment will be PMT. That's the payment. The rate, since it's monthly, will be divided by 12. The number of periods will be times 12. The starting present value is 700. The future value is zero. That's my payment. Awesome. Uh, my interest is going to be the interest rate times last month. And I'll make that a negative because I want to be consistent. So that's negative $3,500. And then the principal will be the difference of the payment and the interest. You know, there are other ways to do this. There's IPMT functions and PPMT functions, but I really think there's something nice to just simply doing it manually. In any event, 
the balance will adjust, obviously, by the principal. It's going down a smidgen. Good stuff. Uh, now i got to build months 2 through 360. The starting balance will always be equal to the ending balance. The payment, I'll just have it equal to the payment above. The interest will be, I'll take that. I'm going to fix the interest rate by running some dollar signs on the D5. I pressed F4 to do that. And then the principal, again, is just that math of A minus B is C. And the ending balance is that. And then I should be able to take row two and just drag that down. And if I do, it populates. And as you can see, he gets to month 300 and it's done. I'm going to zero out these other months down here. Later, I'll talk about ways to make this more fancy and sophisticated, where it actually understands, hey, the balance is over, so stop. But for now, I'm just going to do it the ugly way and just say, hey, we got to month 300, so the balance gets to zero. And that, of course, is the quickest way to know if it's working. If you run a model, if you run an AMWORT schedule for 25 years and you think it's going to be paid off after 25 years, and you get to 25 years and it's not paid off, well, then you mess something up. Very easy to check. Okay, so now I've got these monthlies. I'm going to bring those over to the cash flow statement. This is going to have principal and it's going to have interest and then that's going to be added up together obviously and then that's going to be cash flow after debt service. Good stuff. So now I got to bring over <clears throat> these things so that we have 12 months at a time. Now there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I'm going to do it an ugly way to start with, and then later in later videos I'll make it more sophisticated. So for now I'm just going to do it like the ugliest and worst way possible, which is to say I'm going to do a sum of these 12 months and add up interest and principal which of course we should see you know is equal to 64 and we should see that that divided by 12 is equal to the payment and it is quick double check make sure you're doing things right I can take that little bit of math these 12 cells and I'm gonna drag copy that 12 by 4 area and I'll drag copy it at least say I don't know 60 months again not the prettiest way of doing it but it gets the job done cool stuff and as you can see the interest in the principal goes from 41 and 12 to 40 and 13 to 40 and 14 to 39 and 14 to 38 and 15 you get the idea now to link that up there are more than a few ways to do it I could of course just manually link it I could be like this is equal to principal I could do that. I can manually link it one at a time. And you know, I also could have had it go left, right. In this case, I had the cash flow going top down, the amortization schedule going, or sorry, the cash flow left, right, the amortization schedule going top down. That's just usually how I like to build it, and it seems to work that way. But of course, if you do that, then you have to change the direction of things. So again, Lots of ways to do this. I could use a VLOOKUP. I could use some offsets. I could use some IF statements. For now, I'll do it the ugliest of ways, and I'll just use a VLOOKUP. So, for example, I could say I'm going to look for in, I'm going to look for that number times 12. In other words, in year one, look for month 12. In year two, look for 24. The table I'm going to look on will be this table array. When I find the number 12, I'm going to count columns. And again, there are many more elegant ways to do this, but I'm just trying to get the job done right now. So in this case, if I'm looking for principal, I believe principal is column K. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, column K. 
and we should see when I press enter that I get 12460. Oh, and false because I want an exact match. Sorry. And then if column K is again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 column, we should see when I press enter that it's 12460, and it is. Now to copy that across, I'm going to fix the size of the table array by throwing some dollar signs on that thing. And now when I bring it across, we should see that it does 12460, 13228, 14044, which I go over here, 12460, 13228, 14044, it's working as expected. I'm not going to bring it over to year six because we don't own it in year six. Tradition is if you're selling it at the end of year five, you, you end the debt there. And the same way I'm going to do the VLOOKUP again, I'll just drag that down there for a moment. But now I'm going to look for, again, D5, same C11 to K370, but now instead of looking to column nine, I'll look to column eight. I take that. I drag that across, 41661408892. Let's check that, 41661408892. Life is good. And then we should see that if we add this up, oh, sorry, we should see if we add this plus that, and I bring that across, and I insert a line, and I make these not decimals, because decimals are a little overly accurate for this, we should see at this point that the NOI less the debt service gets me to 25,000, 29, 32, 36, 40. You get the idea. And now we have cash flow after debt service. Good. So we're moving in the right direction. Uh, there's a lot more to do with debt, but at least we've built a very simple AMORT schedule and uh, in part three, we can start doing, you know, what happens at sale, and I can make this a lot more complex. Also, I'll flip the signs in part three, but we're at about 12 minutes, and I find 10 to 15 minute blocks work well. Again, if you're interested in more content like this, or if you have suggestions for additional content, please contact me at joshacarrealestate.com. There is the address right there. Uh, also, if you'd like to attend one of my live classes, I run them every six to eight weeks in New York City. Uh, if you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a webinar. I also deliver classes online for corporations and universities throughout the world. You can read more about it on my website at, again, carrealestate.com. Thanks again for joining me, and keep on building better models.